Hi, I'm John Orlando, and I'm going to show you how you can use iRubric to make rubrics for your class. Now, iRubric is produced by a company called R Campus, and they have a variety of products for the education field, so you can take a look at those. Now, you can make a rubric for free and then copy it over. If you want to go further by importing students and doing grading right on the system, then you have to pay the premium price. Now, one nice thing is that they have a ton of rubric galleries. For instance, in the grades 9 through 12, it says they have 119,000 rubrics. And all you have to do is find a rubric and you can use it or just modify it for your own needs. So for instance, I'll look up digital storytelling and it claims to have found 3,778 rubrics. I'll just take a look at the first one here. Here's one that I might want to use or at least use to start with. I'm going to go back and create one from scratch to show you how to do it. Click iRubric Home scroll down and click build a rubric. Note again, you can duplicate an existing rubric that someone else built, revise one that you built, or build one from scratch. So we'll hit start to build one from scratch. Now from here, I'll give my rubric a title. I'll just call it digital storytelling rubric. I need to give it a subject, and if you want, you can just say general. This doesn't actually fit into a particular subject, and I'm just gonna call it assignment. This is for a purpose of sharing. And I can also say what levels it's appropriate for. I'll say 9 through 12 in undergrad. Now you notice it gives you a starting point. You have three rows and three columns. I will start by adding a column. I'll hit add column. And you notice the columns are poor, fair, good. So the last one we'll say is excellent. Then I'll decide I want to add a couple rows. I'll go to the bottom and hit add row twice. Once again, I'll put a title here, and the reason you do that is it'll show up when you actually create the rubric. Now I'm gonna use a rubric for digital storytelling as an example, and you may find it helpful if you wanna create a rubric for the same purpose. First, I'm gonna hit Advanced Options underneath the title field for the first row. And what this does is it allows you to enter a description under each title, which I think is helpful. So the first row is going to be content. And for a description, I'm going to say that I'm really looking for two things. One, that the student covers all the content that they're supposed to cover. And two, that they cover each piece of content in proper detail. Now, a nice thing here is you can grab and stretch this little box out. You probably want to do that just to make it line up with all the air boxes. The next row I'm going to use is organization. And here, once again, I'm looking for two things. One is the overall organization's logical, and two is that the transition between one topic to another is easy to follow. I'll stretch that one out too. My third topic is style. And here I'm asking if the stylistic elements enhance the message, the images, text, and video. I'll pull this down again. My fourth row is narration. And here I'm looking for two things. One is, is a voice expressive? Does a person show that they're actually interested in the topic by modulating their voice and using voice inflections? And two, is it smooth? People have a tendency to get choppy, to stop in the middle of their narration and then never edit that. So those are two things I'll look for. And finally, sound quality. Very, very often people record with a poor quality microphone and their voice is hard to hear or you get a lot of static or even background sounds. So those are two things I'm going to look for here, clear voice and lack of distracting other sounds. Now I won't go through every single box, but you can easily fill in what you want for each individual item. Under excellent, I'll say all the topics are fully covered with sufficient detail. I'll also add a weight. I'll make this four. We're just going to use a point weighting system. You can also use a percentage system and other things as well. At the bottom, you can decide when it's ready to use, as well as put the rubric into a gallery for others to use, or keep it private. So I'll hit save, and here I'm just going to bounce over to one I've already created. So this is what it looks like when I have it saved. Now I found it's very easy to do nothing more than simply highlight and copy this into a Word document. I'll highlight, copy, open a Word document, I'll simply click paste, keep source formatting and it's gonna come in as a table. Now you notice it's off the side. You're probably gonna to have to play with the table properties a little bit to get it to line up, but eventually it'll line up on the paper, and then from here, all you have to do is save the template, and then for each student, you simply highlight the boxes, 
and indicate where they stand. What I like to do is simply highlight the box, go up to the top, and then use a text color. And of course you can add lines for grade and comments and whatever. So I find this a really easy to use rubric creation system. Try it yourself. Thanks.